2017 was an extraordinary year with many firsts for SVRA. Thanks to the efforts of the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, Vintage Racing has become the fastest growing segment in motorsports for the past four years, and 2018 promises to be even bigger and better than ever. But let's take a look back at what made 2017 so special. We started 2017 with a soft season opener at Roebling Road for the Bob Williams Heritage Cup and Driver School. This was an easy going version of an SVRA event. Plus, we had 17 new drivers come through the driving school and it was very cool to see these students come to other SVRA events throughout the year. First weekend in March and we hosted the Spring Vintage Classic at Sebring International Raceway. Everybody loves coming to Sebring because of its extensive history, but also because I don't think there is a person in the world that feels they have Sebring completely dialed in. It is always a challenging track to everyone. We had a record-breaking crowd and car show for this event, plus Janet Guthrie joined us as our Grand Marshal. Then we are off to Amelia Island to build a racetrack on the Fernandina Beach Municipal Airport. Great weather, great crowds with so much to see and do, with a little vintage racing mixed in with some fantastic machines, including vintage race bikes. We head west to the Auto Club Speedway for the Southern California Historic Sports Car Festival. Always nice weather with a great field of cars. Now we head north to Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin for the Spring Vintage Festival. Road America is always on our driver's top list of tracks, and this shows with the huge fields of great vintage race cars. This is the event where we welcome Mazda Miatas as vintage race cars, and even gave them their very own run group. Now we head west for the first event of our four weeks in a row of vintage racing to the Sonoma Raceway for the Sonoma Historic Motorsports Festival. This event always has some of the finest examples of vintage race cars. There is close racing in every group, but I think it is the atmosphere that sets this event apart. With our party at Ramsgate Winery, Jaguar, Land Rover coming out, and the parade to downtown Sonoma. Our very own Rick Parent had the great idea to embrace open wheel cars and celebrate 50 years of Formula Ford. And what better place to celebrate open wheel cars than the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And it was a fantastic event showcasing some of the greatest open wheel cars in the country. We stayed in Indy to put on the Brickyard Vintage Racing Invitational. There are always some great cars at this event with some very entertaining races, but the story of this event is the event itself. With so much to see and do with the Jaguar Autocross, the Land Rover Off-Road Experience, the Haggerty Show and Shine, Harley Davidson, the concert from Guess Who, but also the most anticipated vintage race of the year, the Indy Legends Pro-Am Race. This was the fourth year of the Indy Legends Charity Pro-Am Race, and this event is quickly becoming the most talked about vintage race in the world. This is such a great experience for SVRA drivers to get to hang out with their heroes and a great opportunity for the spectators to get to rub elbows with some of the biggest names in motorsports. Uh, I'm going to hold my line. A lot of fast cars around me, so uh, a lot of good, good drivers. I want to make sure I hold my line and give them the opportunity to do what they need to do and then just try and settle in and run my pace until it's time for Bill to get in. This year, the Indy Legends Pro-Am was one of the best races I have ever seen. Now let me explain this. Former professional race car drivers that qualified for the Indy 500 get paired up with amateur owner drivers of American muscle cars from the late 60s and early 70s. The people in the crowd get to go back in time and experience a huge field of the loudest, most beautiful cars tear around this iconic venue, shaking the ground and pounding the eardrums for just under an hour. Man, that like was crazy. a heck of a race. I enjoyed that so much. Winning in the brickyard is always awesome. It's an honor to be here, you know. Kurt and all the guys at Copper have done a tremendous job. I mean, you know, they couldn't prepare a better car. Now we go to our fourth event in four weeks and we return for the 40th annual Vintage Grand Prix at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Huge crowds came out to see some great groups of cars running at one of the most challenging tracks of our season. But the story of the weekend 
was how the word about SVRA being the best place to run your Gen 1 vintage spec Miatas. Yeah, it's nice that Mazda's doing this. Uh, I think all us NA guys really appreciate, you know, kind of catering to our wants and desires. So yeah, it's great. Now we go out to the Northwest to Portland International Raceway for the Portland Vintage Racing Festival. Large crowds came out to enjoy the great scenery and fantastic racing, especially in our Group 6. But look at this eclectic example of an SVRA vintage race. This event has my favorite tradition. Fresh strawberry shortcake for everyone in the paddock. That alone is worth the trip. Now we're off to one of the most iconic tracks of our series, Watkins Glen International. We started with a cocktail party at the International Motorsports Research Center. Enormous crowds came out to enjoy full fields of exotic vintage race cars. Formula Juniors joined us with a huge diverse field of historic Formula Junior race cars. But the story of this event is always the downtown parade as hundreds of our race cars get to parade around the original Watkins Glen circuit in front of tens of thousands of spectators. Now we're off to Virginia International Raceway for the Haycock Classic Gold Cup. VIR is always on our driver's list of favorite tracks and this weekend we had great weather large crowds and some huge fields of vintage race cars. Miatas again were in full force at this event as well and are now completely a part of the SVRA family. We head to the beautiful Appalachian Mountains just off the tail of the dragon for the first ever SVRA slaying the dragon hill climb. A beautiful place for you and your car to race the clock so you can go home with the sword showing everyone that you defeated the dragon. We wrap up the 2017 season at the Circuit of the Americas for the fifth running of the U.S. Vintage Racing National Championship. We had about 350 vintage race cars all fighting to win their class so they could take home the coveted Gold National Championship Bell Helmet. Needless to say, we had some huge fields of race cars tearing around this very technical, tricky track. It seemed like about half of them were open wheel cars. We had so many Formula Fords this year, we had to divide them into two groups. And this was some of the best racing all weekend. We had some fierce battles in all classes for our drivers to be able to claim that they are the 2017 U.S. Vintage Racing National Champion. 2017 was another record-breaking year for SVRA, and 2018 promises to be even better. There isn't a race company in the United States that can boast such a terrific schedule at the most premier, iconic tracks. We hope to see you at a few of these events.